to continue on uh, shoeing kernel. I'm going to take a shoe that I've pulled from kernel, I've cleaned it up, I've saved the heels, I've leveled the shoe, I've trimmed the foot. Now I'm going to take a wedge pad and I'm going to mount it to the shoe. And this is where I think uh, I can show a few tricks that might help save you time as a shoer or as an amateur trying to do your own horse. Um, this is a bar wedge pad. This is actually a three degree, uh, fairly steep angle. But if you were to look at Colonel, uh, who is definitely prone to tripping, uh, you can see that uh, he definitely has a broken angle from his passion down in and a long toe. Now that will back up. Some more to come on that. I like to, when I set the shoe on the wedge pad, you'll notice on this bar, uh, it's, it's a little concave. Um, you know, I, I think technically you can go that towards the ground surface <clears throat> or you can put this towards the, uh, towards the frog. I, I like to use it as, as an option. It's a little textured on this side, it's smooth on this side. I've used it both ways, have not really found a difference. If I've got a frog that is protruding below the hills and I need a little extra room so I'm not putting pressure on the frog, then I will use this cutout side to go towards the frog. So it would be set on the shoe like this and the flat side towards the ground. But that's not the case with Colonel. So I like to put it uh, on the ground side. That to me, just one less thing to get held up uh, on the ground when they're traveling. Now, here's some of the handy parts. I know that setting uh, pads or wedge pads, often you can drill and put a, a rivet in. This is a trick my dad showed me that I found really pretty handy. So I'll, I'll take a nail and I will set it in the heel nail of the shoe. Now that my shoe is centered and where I want it to be, you can see the placement. The back of the shoe is just right at the back of the heels. Over the hardy hole of my anvil, I'll take my nail as normal. I'll set it, hold the shoe and the pad firm. I'll set it flat and I'll wring the nail off. As you can see, the nail's off, the shoe's set. I'll do the same on the other side. Sometimes you have to readjust your shoe a little bit to the pad, so I've done that. Drive the nail, a couple taps, you can see the nail's through. I'll take the claw of my hammer and I'll wring the nail off. So now I've got a pad stuck to my shoe that's firmly held in place. When I actually set this shoe, these nails will be pulled and re-driven with a, a new nail through the hook. But this gives me a chance now to cut the pad to fit. Lots of ways to cut a pad, more efficient ways. I'll show you a quick way that works for me. I'll use the vise on my anvil stand. Where this is a thick pad, I'll start at the heel with my nippers. I'll give it a couple quick bites through the thick part of the shoe out into the quarter. I could continue on just with my nippers, that's easy enough. So for those of you at home that only have a pair of nippers, a hammer, and uh, some nails, this is how you too can set a pad with the tools that you have. So when you get to the finer part of the pad, sometimes it's easier to use a knife. This is uh, an old timer. They don't make knives like they used to. And I know many of you are going to be saying, don't cut towards you, but I have found, if I'm careful, this is by far the best way. There you go. I finished the pad. I'll roll it around, cut through the thin part of the pad, and there you go. We have a pad set to the shoe, set with two nails. Now that will allow me to go and finish setting the shoe. Once the shoe's set, I'll pull these heel nails and we'll likely reuse those heel nails to fasten the shoe to the hood. All right, more to come.